Before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you ShiftSync for being the main video sponsor for today. I love communities. You can meet with like-minded people to exchange on specific topics and learn something new. In case you missed it, there is a great new community out there waiting for you to join for free. It's called ShiftSync, a place for testers, developers and DevOps specialists and others if you like so. The goal of ShiftSync is to create a dynamic and engaging space for developers, testers and industry leaders to share knowledge and grow professionally. Quality is more than testing and such sharing with collaboration will help improve the software, develop software development lifecycle on every stage. From a security point of view, code writing, defining requirements or accelerating performance and setting up high functioning for development teams. ShiftSync is a community for anyone and everyone interested in all aspects of quality engineering, from left to right across the software development spectrum. You can engage in, with relevant end users, practitioners, testers, developers, developer, DevOps specialists, software administrators or product managers. You can find relevant content such as blog posts, discussions, roundtables or webinars. The community creates uh, created also added gamification to solve missions and challenges to earn points and to rank with the community members. So that's a great thing. Make sure to sign up, use the link in the video description and to start your community collaboration today and find like-minded people to exchange your knowledge, share your knowledge and grow your skill set as of today. Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here. Today's video is coming from you, from the software testing community. As you can already see in the, or you have read it already in the title, today's video is about time management for software testers. And yes, it's eight tips that um, I collected to have like a better time management in case you're working as a software tester. However, if you're here as a developer, product manager or coming from any other industry, you can also strike out software tester and follow the tips for better time management because they're not really connected to software testers, but um, they're helpful for us in our daily work life as human beings, no matter where we're working. But the focus for today's video is more on like digital work, like white collar workers, right? Working on in an office working on software development is the main focus. So let's take a look. What are the eight tips that I brought for you today? First one, I think it's a no brainer, right? Prioritize your tasks. So what you should do is you should start your daily work by listing all the tasks that you would like to work on, on this day. Use a pen, a piece of paper and a pen, use some digital devices or type it in a, in a notepad, however you like it, but really, prioritize your task and write out everything that you would like to do on that single day. Of course, you should prioritize them based on urgency and priority. This highly depends on your project, what you're currently working on, what's the status and so forth. Next one is, of course, this is something that I'm talking to many people and this is something that I've never seen before is share your task with your team to make them transparent. I'm also not doing it myself, but maybe I should do it, right? I mean, I have a transparent calendar, like everyone in the company can go to my work calendar and see what I'm up to, so what I'm working up to. And I now started also to add like, not working blockers, but at between the meeting gaps, I add blockers on the things that I'm currently working on and also to mark them as a non-blocking entry so somebody else can book a meeting with me. So make your, make your work transparent because then it's maybe helpful for you. You don't, don't, go, don't get distracted. And, but it should actually be a thing because if you work on in an, in an agile working environment and you have the daily stand up, you are, should already, already say like, what are you talk, uh, focusing for today? So it should be kind of transparent. But in case you have some hidden tasks and hidden agenda, make it available for others as well. So you don't uh, get less distracted. Of course, you should focus on those tasks. Don't just write them down and then do something completely else. Focus on them and then you can can be really happy in the end of the day that you maybe managed all of them. And then of course, adjust the list if it really needed. Yeah, I mean, we all know that something is happening, right? I mean, there's never a day that is the same way, at least not for me. There's always something coming between that needs my attention. And I think it will be the same thing for you. So don't blindly 
say, okay, this is my list. I'm not going to do something else. No, be, be open-minded and see to uh, what, what is needed and in case you need to, to help somebody else or there's a critical thing coming up where you have to jump in. So adjust the list if needed. The second tip that I would like to give you is to plan ahead. Yeah. I mean, doing the daily task breakdown for yourself is something really helpful to structure your mind and to, to not think about too many things at the same time. But at the same time, you should also plan ahead. And what I usually have done when I was working in an agile um, team is I, I planned my work together with the team and also alongside the product roadmap. I mean, if you're working in an agile team and you would like to introduce, let's say, test automation in your team, uh, you should plan it side by side with the product roadmap. So also make a test automation plan, for example, or any other plan that you have in your mind, and then to align it with the product development. And again, make it transparent to the team. So everybody know, knows what you are up for, what you would like to do, and maybe you get some support from your team members in case it's test automation related, maybe it's CI, CD pipeline related, and so forth. And yes, I just mentioned, involve the team in all quality related topics. Yes, I mean, if you are the only person in your team with the, the quality head on, the official one, but everyone should focus on quality, we know, um, make it transparent and ask the others in your, team, uh, in your team to help you out. Developers, designers, products, and so forth and so forth. Of course, again, focus. You will hear this more often today is focus on the plan. I mean, of course, change the plan if needed, Yes, there's this last point on that slide. Of course, you should have a plan, somehow stick to it, but in case you have to adjust, it's similar with a product roadmap. If users are telling you like, hey, phew, this is not working, I don't like it, I don't need something else, you, as the product uh, people have to adjust the roadmap as well, the same you should do. And this is the same for the architects planning the software that has to be built. So this is something, my second tip for you. The third one is to set realistic deadlines, yes. If you know your tasks, set realistic deadlines. Don't blindly put, like from the first tip that I gave you, like write down your tasks on a daily basis. Don't write 100 tasks over there. Yeah. So really be pragmatic and set realistic deadlines. Maybe start with one task. Maybe you know already, like this task takes two days. Then maybe split it up, put it in smaller tasks. But be realistic to yourself. Yeah. Um, what also can help you is to define short-term and long-term goals that might help you to get clarification on your thinking, on your mind, and also on the work that you would like to do within your team. Um, align the deadlines with the team progress and speed. Yes, it's also important, right? I mean, if you know that the team progress is rather good, so you have some some, some spare days or spare minutes to focus on your task or developers that tend to be more slow or there's something in between or you have to wait for things, you can put on your task list and then see like what you can do next to reprioritize. Um, again, communication. I like to communicate, talk to your team members and communicate your deadlines in case you have some. Sometimes testers work in many teams or in two teams, which is not ideal, I would say, but you might have deadlines from other points, from other stakeholders, maybe from your manager. Communicate them, make it transparent. And last but not least, you should really know your limits, right? I mean, something that also comes in, in another tip is to not only setting realistic deadlines, but know your limits, know when it's enough, yeah? Know when to do the next thing and when not to do the next thing. So that's important to know, but something that you will know, that you will notice while you're working in, in, in a software development for a longer time period. So what else? Avoid multitasking. Yes. I mean, I bet you have heard like people in an interview process saying, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really good at multitasking. Nope. Nobody is good at multitasking. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. It's not working. I mean, imagine you have to, I mean, I record the video right now and at the same time I cannot reply to some text messages or I cannot read a newspaper. It's not working. Multitasking is never working, right? It's, it's not healthy and it leads to a decreased productivity because you have so many flying like bees, butterflies in your head. That's like, oh, I have to, to keep a track on this project. Now it's project B, project C is waiting as well. Try to focus and avoid it. Yeah, it doesn't lead to increased productivity. It will just increase your stress level. I mean, I, I bet you have experienced that in your, in your working life, right? So the stress level is like boom, going up and it's not healthy for you. 
Focus on your tasks again. Yeah? Short term, long term. Make your list, make your plan, and then focus on these things. This will help you a lot in avoiding multitasking. And in case you notice that you have to do similar things at the same time, then make it transparent. Uh, transparent. Tell your peers like, hey, look, this is the list, my priority list from what I see is important. But what's your priority? Because also some other people have a priority on your work. Tell me what's more important for you. Then clarify things to avoid multitasking. Yeah, and then again, simple as it is, finish one task before you start another one. Try it out. Last, uh, not the last one, but the fifth one is to take breaks. Yes, especially in remote setups, we have to take more breaks because it's really important to take breaks. I mean, just think about yourself, like how many hours you spend in front of your computer. You look at the screen, it's really hurtful for your eyes, for your brain, for your mental health. So take breaks, it's important, yeah? It will recharge your batteries. So for, from my point of view, for example, every lunch break, I have a, a quick lunch, I have some food, I take my time to eat the food, and then I'll go out for a walk. It's like seven to eight minutes. It's not that far, I know, but that's like my routine, my habit. No matter the weather, like the weather conditions, wind, snow, rain, I'll go outside and take a walk. It's important. And I should do it more often, but it helps me a lot to, to recharge, to get some fresh air and to, to help me to have a better time management in the long run. The breaks will increase your overall productivity. That's for true. That's really true. I mean, I, I notice myself when I have like some days I have back to back meetings, like from the morning till the evening and I'll just like leave my desk and I'm completely wasted. My brain is dead. You know, I cannot do anything anymore. And it, I couldn't also start new tasks and my time management is completely wasted because I completely lost track of things. But taking breaks in between would help a lot. So that's something I try to avoid to have back-to-back -back meetings or back-to-back -back tasks, like it's really to, to take breaks and to, to have a relief for a second. That's what I just mentioned, go out for lunch walks or start the, the working day with walking outside or doing some exercises in between, stretching, you know, and this, this helps you a lot in order to focus again on your time, on your tasks, yeah. And then there's maybe something that you can try out is this uh, Pomodoro technique. So it's a technique, there's like little tiny helpers that you can in install in your system. It's the technique says that you can focus for 25 minutes on one specific task. And after the 25 minutes, you take a five minutes break. Yeah, try it out. It's really cool. Uh, the, the, the sixth uh, tip I would like to give you is use time tracking tools. Sounds weird for, for time management, but yeah, track your time while working on your tasks. This might be something for like, in case you don't know like how, how long your tasks will be and maybe there's something that you know that is coming back in the near future, might be um, a repetitive task. Maybe just write down the papers like, okay, I started this task at eight o'clock, I finished at 8.30. Yes, easier than this. Just just for yourself to get a feeling, how long do I really need for for this task? And this is the important thing. Do it only for you. Don't track it and share it with somebody else. That's only for you. Like how long are you really um, uh, working at that task? Yeah. So to really focus and to keep an eye on your on your on your um, time spent, because it will help you in uh, improve your prioritization. Yeah, as I said, if they're like repetitive tasks, for example, uh, writing test cases for a, a specific feature or work on the CICD pipeline, and you know that this kind of work always takes around about one hour or two hours, and the next time you work on your prioritization list or the tasks for your day, and you see, oh, I have CICD pipeline testing, test cases, and some coachings, something like that, and you know already that's, that these four tasks take maybe 10 hours, you can always say, okay, now I have to strike out something based on the priority. So it's helpful. Um, yeah, it will help you to, 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 sorry, to do better task planning, as I just said. And don't overdo it with the tracking. That's really important. Don't like measure every second. It's just a rough you know, estimation to get a feeling on your time that you spend on certain tasks. Uh, you can also do like some Excel magic and then to, to do some um, some some um, some summaries and at the end of the week end of the month like how many hours you spend on what just for your time management maybe you can improve things but don't 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 overdo it with it yeah so that's important so the seventh uh, tip or hint i would like to give you is learn to say no yeah this is also not my best uh, strength that i have 
because I like to help people, I like to share knowledge, and so saying no is not the easiest one for me. And yes, we all know that software testers tend to add more and more many things to their to-do list because sometimes we, or not sometimes, but we communicate with many different people, with different stakeholders from different teams, with different yeah, kind of people uh, within the software development cycle. And sometimes those people, when they know that you are like the domain expert from your product, they tend to ask you like, hey, can you help me out here and there and blah, and can you do this for me? Can you just like reset the test data? Can you just create a test user here? This is something that you can do, of course, but it, of course it completely destroys your time management. And that's why it's important to say, no, I don't have time today. Let's talk about it for tomorrow, for example. So really push away people in a, in a friendly way. Yeah. So this is what I just said. We are domain experts and usually are the first contact person for a team or for the team members. Um, yeah, learn say to no to requests and questions, what I just said. Kindly say to people like, hey, look, this is my prioritized task list. This is something that I'm focusing on today. Is it really so important that I have to help you today or no? Easy as it is. And last but not least, saying no will keep your focus. Yeah, sometimes it's good. Sometimes, but I, I'm also not good at it, but it's sometimes that things you should try out is turn off uh, emails and Slack. And we come to that in a second, like communication systems so that nobody can reach you in a remote setup. It's not the, the most polite thing to do to just like be offline and nobody knows what you're doing basically. But maybe if you need this one hour of focus work, do it. Yeah, and this is also basically a no to somebody else. And last but not least, and I think the most important thing to keep our track in terms of time management is to eliminate distractions. Yes, I can. I think you can already guess what this is all about. Distractions eat up your time completely. Yeah, so if your phone is ringing while you're working focused on something, the attention is gone, you look at your phone and you have a the first distraction. Maybe you, you just lost the idea that you would like to, to write down or to code in or to test in the uh, your, your daily work. Yeah. So try to minimize this as much as possible, really. Um, turn off your phone, no social media, close the office door in case you work in the office. As I just said, switch off uh, email, switch off any messaging system, everything. Turn off everything. And maybe also communicate this with the team saying, okay, or put it in your calendar, focus time. I'm not available, I'm working, but I'm not here. I'll be back online in two hours and then we can talk. This will help you a lot in, term, in terms of time management and focus on the things to do, yeah? Also try to also to minimize meetings during your productive hours. Uh, my productive hours, for example, are usually in, like before lunch. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I had enough sleep, I'm powerful, maybe I did some, some sports, some training, some workouts before, so I'm really like focused, I can think about stuff, and then if I have only meetings in the morning, uh, it's like, it's not the most productive day for me. So also try out what kind of person you are, and then based on that, plan your day and structure your day or your week. It will help you to, distract, uh, to eliminate distractions. And last but not least, make it visible in the team. As I said, that's, that's you just switched off emails and other things. That nobody's asking like, hey, where's Daniel today? Is he sick? Oh, we don't know. We have to call his wife. Or we <laughs> so you know already you get another distraction level. So um, as, I, as I already said, like be tra as transparent as possible with your tasks and also with your time that you're working on. Prioritize it and try to eliminate the all the distractions that we are facing these days to really focus on the stuff that you have to do. And I think it will be really healthy for you. You will be, you have, we will see an increase in activity, brain activity, mental health, happiness, less stress and so forth. Yeah. So these were my eight tips for you. Um, it would be really nice to know your tips. Yeah. If you have more, uh, leave me a comment below in the underneath the video description, of course. Uh, leave me a thumbs up as always. Leave a subscription if you like the content. I am currently preparing lots of great videos with other vendors, products. So stay tuned. I have some really cool ideas. Also, some more interviews are coming up. And as always, enjoy the video or you already enjoyed it. I don't know. Make sure to follow up the next video. And thank you for coming in. Bye-bye. See you soon.